Uh, good morning, MC Canada Brothers and Sisters. My name is Nak Sun Kim. I'm a member of Sherbrooke Church. Welcome to the Sherbrooke Worship Service. Uh, even though we can't worship together in person, we worship together in spirit. May the spirit of the, our Lord Jesus Christ bind us together with his love and peace in the worship. Uh, 좋은 아침입니다. Uh, Manuel Church Canada 형제자매님. 셜브룩 예배 오신 것을 환영합니다. 우리가 비록 얼굴을 보며 함께 예배를 할수 없지만 영으로 우리는 함께 예배합니다. 하나님의 영신 성령님께서 우리를 예배 안에서 사랑과 평화로 연결시켜 주시기를 기대합니다. I will read uh, Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your Maker. O people of Jerusalem, exult in your King. Praise His name with dancing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! 여호와께 새 노래를 불러라. 믿음이 깊으니 다 함께 모인 자리에서 주님을 찬송하여라. 이스라엘아 기뻐하여라. 너희를 지으신 분 생각하여 기뻐하여라. 시온 백성아 즐거워하여라. 너희 왕을 생각하여 기뻐하여라 춤추며 주님의 이름을 찬송하여라 아멘 
Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Hey everyone, welcome here again. Uh, I just want to say last Tuesday, I was on a walk with Young Yi and uh, I asked him, hey Young, last summer you asked me to watch uh, my mister. You told me to watch my mister. Why do you tell me to watch my mister? And so, um, Young, he told me, well, you know what, I'm just going to show you the footage. So, Young, why did you ask me to watch the uh, K-drama, My Mister? Because I liked it. So, as you can see, Young Yi says he likes it. <laughs> so, last summer, all summer long, Deborah and I watched this show called My Mister. It was 32 hours long. And we watched all of it, and in the end, yes, we agreed with Young. We liked it. It's a great show. My Mister is this show about this manager of an architecture firm named Mr. Park. And if you click down below, you can see this theme, this uh, scene that I'm going to tell you about. Mr. Park is the guy in the scene who's the manager, and he's always trying to do the right thing. And there is this ladybug that comes into the. Uh, the office and Mr. Park is like, okay, I'm going to try. I don't want to kill this. I want to just catch it gently and just let out the window. So he's, he's trying to get the right angle and everything. And then it lands on this other woman who's also the main character, Jeanne, this woman character. And she looks at it and then she just kills it like that. Meanwhile, the whole office has been trying to catch this, um, this, this uh, ladybug. Anyway, it's pretty funny, and then you just see the reaction of these people on their faces because they're like, we work so hard at this. So Mr. Park, he is the man. He is everything that he does, he does with integrity. He can, they throw so many things at the poor guy. Like his wife, he, he's about to lose his wife and his work and his job and his boss and Oh man, just everything that can go crazy. He's like Job in in the book of Job. And and but the thing about him is like Job. He refuses to be reduced to the level of everyone else that is playing on such a low level. He has integrity all the time. He always says the truth. Even when someone's attacking him, he's always thinking, "How can I honor this person? How can I honor this person?" It's a crazy show when you just think of, wow, this Mr. Park, he has such 
integrity. And as we were watching the show, Jesus said to me, Kevin, look at this guy. No matter what happens, no matter what happens to the guy, he's always taking the high road. And Philippians chapter 4, verses 9, our verses this morning, they talk about exactly this. They, uh, Paul talks about this, and he, he's interesting because he, he, he basically looks at integrity, but sees the eight different sides of integrity. It's like he's holding up, like integrity is a diamond, and he's holding it up, and he's going, look at this, one side of the diamond, and you can see the the light of Christ shining through, and it's really refreshing. And I'm just gonna go through this, and as I talk, just kind of make it worship. Like, yes, God, yeah, I can see that. That's the way you want me to be. That's the way you are. This is such a good moment. So he says, verse eight, finally, beloved, whatever is true, truth means speaking 100%, not concealing anything. And then he twisted a little bit more, and then we see the second side of this bright and shiny diamond. Whatever's honorable, that means worthy of respect, good character. Turns it again, whatever is just, proper. You know when something's just proper and right, given the circumstance? That's what just is. And he twists it one more time and another light shines through. Pure, whatever is pure. That means whatever, think of it, innocent, chaste, modest, clean. Does that feel good? Then Paul twists one more time. Whatever is pleasing. Now this word is an interesting word. In Greek, it's prosphiles. It's the way, you know, in COVID, when you haven't seen someone in person for a really long time, and then you see them, that feeling, that's what pleasing means, pros files means. Ah, just a relaxed, happy feeling. Things are good. He continues and twists one more. Whatever is commendable, and commendable means something that's worthy of approval. Live your life worthy of approval. And he twists another. If there's any excellence, which means valor. I always think of Lord of the Rings. Not the killing part, but in the valor part of Lord of the Rings. And then he finally closes with the eighth one. Anything worthy of praise. Think about that when you say to someone, wow, you did a great job. Anything worthy of praise. Paul says, think about this and imitate me because I'm doing this. Sometimes it's a bit frustrating. Like in the news, there was that millionaire couple. They, I think two years ago, they won. I didn't win. He made, I think, $10 million. Anyways, they... In January, they cut the line. They flew all the way up to some remote village. It was a First Nations village. And they put this entire village at risk. And they lied about so many things all the way there and all the way back just to get a COVID shot in, in, in January before everyone else. And he made like $10 million two years ago. And then just yesterday, they said the verdict came out and he had to pay $3,000. $3,000, that's all? Like, if you made $10 million, what percentage is that? I can't, I can't figure it out, but um, that's what you guys can do right now, just, and just email me that number. So I was thinking about that when I was filling out a form, and I kind of felt like Bilbo Baggins. And here is a meme. This is what a meme is. Government slaps millionaires on the wrist, then asks you to declare your income, quote unquote. And this is your thought. This is what I'm talking about. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I keep it? Everyone else is doing it. These multi-millionaires are ripping off everyone. Why can't I just say, do something? 
God says, live with integrity. I want you to live with integrity. And you know what? I know it's hard. I know it's not easy to live all eight sides of this diamond. But I have a super surprise for you. If you live into this, there's some things that I'm going to do for you that are just going to blow your mind. And there's three things. One is that the definition of integrity is Jesus. Jesus lived a life of ultimate integrity. He's like Mr. Park, but times 10, 10 million. <laughs> He's 3,000. <laughs> Jesus is 10 million. Now, Jesus is true and right and pure. And that is such good news. You know why? Because he's our master and he's going to treat us good and pure and he's going to listen to us. He's not going to deceive us. He's not going to depersonalize us. We can go to him and he is our solid rock. He's the diamond and, and he's, that's, isn't that encouraging? We have this rock of salvation called Jesus. Now the second blessing that you can receive living this life of integrity is this idea of a tree because Jesus provides the shelter and this tree and so you can imagine a tree exists and then there's like squirrels and birds and little nice butterflies and ladybugs they all exist under this tree and this tree enables them to live and provides shelter for them. It's like there's this whole life cycle that happens because the tree is there. And that's what Jesus does for us. But when we live with integrity, we do that for others. And that's what Mr. Park did for Jeanne, right? She was messed up. She had so many problems. She had so many issues. And Mr. Park was for her like nothing else. He just helped her and he was the tree of righteousness. Isaiah 61 says it a lot better than me. Verse 3, God says, I'm going to bestow upon you a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of joining instead of joy instead of mourning, garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. But here it is. And you will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the day of his splendor. So you, as you walk in integrity, you're like this giant oak and you're walking around and there's like bees and birds and squirrels that all are living, existing. Other people, like Mr. Park did this too, right? Like he saved his brothers, he saved his work, his wife. He was the only one in this whole thing living with integrity. But all of these people were able to flourish because of Mr. Park. And it wasn't his skill. All it was is that he refused to ever to take the low road. He always took the high road. And the last blessing, the, the last surprise, the, the huge win of living with integrity is... Uh, when you live with integrity, uh, your life has peace. And verse 9 says, uh, Paul says, do all eight things, and this is his conclusion. Paul's conclusion is, the God of peace will be with you as you do all these things. The God of peace will be with you. And the reason why this works is because when you don't live with integrity, let's say you lie, when you lie, you break yourself. Because what you're doing and who you are is broken. And that creates, that brokenness creates anxiety in your life because something's wrong. And let's say when you're not pure and you depersonalize someone into a sexual object. Well, you break yourself because your values and your actions are torn apart. They're not together. You break yourself, and when you break yourself like that, 
that creates anxiety and stress because your body goes, this isn't what's supposed to happen. Well, I'm doing this, but I believe this. Boom, stress. <laughs> I was working as a dental technician in Richmond. And I was new there and my boss was getting frustrated with me because I would always try to justify why I did things wrong. I thought personally that I was always doing everything right, but it seemed like he was just never believing me and anything that went wrong, he's like, you know, why are you saying you didn't do it? So one time uh, there's this big mistake that happened and these two people were arguing about whose fault it was and I was, sit I was just doing my work somewhere else. And then I didn't know my boss heard it, but I just said, oh, I did that mistake. Now I didn't do the mistake, but I just said I did the mistake. And, and it was really interesting because it stopped the argument. Everyone stopped. But then after that, my boss never harassed me about this anymore. Cause I, I guess he did, I didn't know, but he had heard that I, I took a responsibility for something that I hadn't even done, but finally he just let it go. And then he wasn't on my case anymore. Swallowing your pride, coming to your senses, taking responsibility, that enables peace that passes understanding to fall on you. So I want you to think right now about a situation that you're in. And maybe you're struggling with it and you're wondering what to do. The answer to that is just live your life. Live through that situation with integrity. You don't have to have the answer. Even like the story with my lap, I just, it wasn't even my fault. Now that's a little bit different, but just, just go, I know what to do. I need to walk purely. I know what to do right now. I need to think well. I know what to do. I need to, you know, humbly, accept what's going on. So as we close, um, at the end of the story of my mister, and you can click down below to see uh, the actual video footage. We can't have it here because of copyright, but you can click and see this. And if, this, if you're gonna watch my mister, you should just turn this thing off right now because I'm gonna tell you <laughs> the main part of what happens. So GN was this mess, right? And, and my, mis my mister, Mr. Park, was the Oak of Righteousness. And there's so many times where Mr. Park helps out Jian. And Jian had, you know, she's a scoundrel. She did all these things and Mr. Park helped her. Well, at the end, uh, Jian finally leaves for a couple years and that's the end of the story. And then there's this epilogue where Jian and Mr. Park meet by accident two years later. And Mr. Park um, and Jian come together and they don't know what to do. And so Mr. Park, he's always the classy one. He says, let's just shake hands once. And so they shake hands once. And wow, you know, <laughs> 32 hours later, you know, and Deborah and I are crying and crying and everything. And it's just awesome to see this. But then it hit me, it's like, that's what it's like with us and Jesus. Jesus is Mr. Park, and we are like Jian. And Jesus is this oak of righteousness, and in him we finally find our bearings. Like we can finally prosper because we have Jesus. And it's just like, yeah, I love God, I love Jesus. I love that we can have this life of integrity and that we can be blessed, we can be diamonds, we can shine bright like a diamond, and we can be oaks of righteousness. And isn't this just an awesome life that God's given us? So thanks for joining us. And um, what a blessing that we can go, that you can go out right now and live your life like Jeanne at the end with this newfound confidence, with this integrity, and with this joy and this peace that only comes through Jesus Christ. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for you. Peace. 